everybody. This is Kristen from Christopia Studios. I decided I wanted to do a short series of monochrome pours. Um, I just want to see about having a monochrome background, maybe to make a wintry scene or a barnscape of some kind. This particular one, I want to be a winter scene kind of thing in the background because I intend to embellish it with a wintry creature. So come along with me. Alright. Yeah, that's not enough. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, what are you all listening to while you're hanging out at home? I hope everybody's staying safe, sheltering as they need to. Um, I hope everybody's got enough food, enough supplies and enough income to get those. Uh, I, by the way, am currently unemployed except for my working from home. I'm uh, building my art business, taking the time to write my second young adult novel in a series, finally, after years of being too busy to do it. And also, um, painting and selling things on eBay and Poshmark, but I can't go out and source anything right now for my reseller business, so I'm just relisting some stuff that kind of fell off the listings before, but for the most part, what I'm doing is this. So this time, I'm leaving the pearl out, putting white in the bottom, silver, Tiny little bit of black. Just a tiny little bit. White. Silver. Eeny beeny eeny beeny bit of black. White. It's really too much paint, but. Silver. Right. And here is where I'll put a little more black. Now, let's see how it works without the pearl and with less black in here and with my whole canvas already painted or covered in white. You come around to this side so you can see. Now I know that's a lot of black, but that's going to be pushed to the edges. Too much silver, not enough white this time, it looks like. Here comes the light. All right, let's grab that torch. bubbles in there. Okay. 
Bobby. Need coffee. Okay. Now. I'm going to bring it down this way. It's really too much paint on there, but I think I'm going to do a little dipping of tiles in this stuff. And I'm also saving my paint skins, the dried stuff that's on the thing that's on my tray. Peels off easily once it's dried. And I'm saving a bunch of those. I'll show you kind of how I save them in another video. We'll, we'll do one face to face. And I'll show you what I do to save them. I'm waiting on some supplies to come from Amazon to finish storing them. But I'm planning on doing a very large multimedia painting. too much of that off bottom but I do want more white in this look in the centrally located bits here I'm gonna put this on the pad and then back down I'm trying to stretch that white out a little bit Maybe we'll bring that center over this way this time. No. There's still quite a bit of paint on this canvas, but I would rather leave it in the orientation that I like as opposed to um, pouring more paint off. Because I embellish pretty much everything. Oh, these gloves. <laughs> full, full of paint. I reuse these several times until I just either tear them apart or I don't want to put my hands back in them again. Um, just to just save, I have plenty. I had gotten a new box just before everything started to go awry. And I'll give you a hint, if you're looking in pharmacy for these non-latex gloves, these nitrile gloves, you're not gonna find them. It's very unlikely that you'll find them in the pharmacy or in the pharmacy section of say your local department store. However, if your department store has an automotive section, check back there. Helpful hint for anybody who wants to get some gloves but hasn't been able to find any. I found these after the panic began, um, a package of them, back in automotive when everywhere else in the store was, did, was sold out. So just be aware, automotive sometimes carries nitrile gloves and latex gloves as well. I don't wear latex, I have a sensitivity. To latex. My older sister has a flat out put her in the hospital allergy to latex. So I'm thankful I don't have that issue because most acrylic paint has latex in it. Um, not this kind. Latex house paint tends to have latex in it. But I'm not sure I like so much white in here. So I am going to try to draw some black back in. That's another great thing about acrylic pouring is that you can just 
do so much with it. And you don't have to be uh, Van Gogh or um, Leonardo da Vinci. You don't have to be this amazing painter. You don't have to know how to draw beautifully. Though drawing skills does help in composition, just to understand what composition looks like and means. Even if you're just doing pores, you still want it to be composed in an interesting way. I'll move this black over here since I'm using it. Making sure you're still in camera. Move it back by a tiny bit. I'm just trying not to lose design down here. Adding a little interest. I really am surprised that that white, which had silicone in it, I know I put it in there. I watched myself do it. it. Just isn't bringing forth any of those cells. Now it may sit a while, and more of that. Cool cloudiness will come through if you get down close to it. There is some really interesting silver cloudiness underneath it. Um, however, I do think it can use a little help. Gave it down there. Let's. Get that line out of there. I'm just using an old chopstick. I accidentally got paint on it once, so it has become my little pointy toy. And I'm just creating some interest with some scraggly branches coming up out of the ground. any of you watch like mixed media girl um marcy she loves so i've seen her do a lot of these really cool little just scraggly trees i don't want too much going on because i am going to be embellishing this pour with something living probably in it make sure that I'm not taking it all up with tree shapes. I do like trees. This is my favorite thing. Not too many things, just a little bit more interest. I think I need a little bit more black down here in the base. I'm trying not to stir up that really cool structure in the middle or these really beautiful structures over here on either side. silver in there too. I kind of like that little spider webby looking bit down there. There. Yeah, I don't want these branches over here quite so much. Let's 
think we might need to live over there that those branches would be in the way of. I mean, I can paint over, as soon as this dries, I can do anything I want, paint over anything I don't like. So when you're doing this stuff, if you decide you want to do some embellishments, don't be afraid. Acrylic is a very forgiving medium. It dries, and then you can just paint right over it if you decide to. I think that rock would be kind of behind that little tree. I really like that. Now, I don't want to mess too much with the beautiful stuff down here. But again, I'm just creating a little bit of boundary and structure here with which to paint on later. Kind of connecting these things. My husband's gonna see this and say, I want it, I want it. <laughs> he likes the monochrome stuff. But also, those of you who have who paint, do you have where is your main selling place? I used to have an Etsy store, but then Etsy just got so inundated with people doing poor paintings, that my paintings, even with embellishments, I guess kind of get lost in the keywords. So it's been a long time since I've had an Etsy store. I mean, since I've used it. And I'm thinking about rebooting it simply because I need that extra platform to sell my original paintings and prints on. I have, um, I, I've sold most of my work so far at face-to-face -face shows, which are being canceled right now. Um, my April show has been canceled. My May show is up in the air. They're not sure whether they're going to be able to have it or not. It just depends on how far through this virus we are and if we've leveled out that curve of people catching it. But um, meanwhile, I need more platforms. I've sold a few things off Facebook and I, I understand that there are a lot of people needing to and wanting to hang on to their money right now they're not buying stuff like this so I, I understand that I'm building a lot of backlog too but for those of you who've had experience with Etsy comment down below or find me at my Christopia Studios Facebook page just look up Christopia K-R-I-S-T-O-P-I-A studios all one word on my as a page on my Facebook and, and like that page and comment there or um, or comment right here in the YouTube video but I would love to hear about any of your experiences with Etsy because I'm really thinking about putting my Etsy store back up um, I mean why not they don't charge that much for a listing and it stays up for I think 40 days before you have to repay a fee so anyway let me know what your experiences are and also um let me know what you think about what we've done um please hit that uh thumbs up button if you like this video i'm going to bring you down for a close-up so i apologize for the shake but please let me know what you think about these pores in this video. So look at this down here. It's even awesome even though I dripped. But that's gonna be a bit of a stone. And I just put in some tree structures. I really do love this swirly thing in there. Like a vortex of snow or something. And anyway, if you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. Hit that little bell if you want notifications um, of shaky of future videos and um, please comment below uh, if if they're trolly comments I will delete them but uh, I haven't had any trolly comments as yet so um, feel free to comment say what you think um, even if you have constructive criticism 
I'm willing to listen, make sure it's constructive and not just, ew, that's ugly. <laughs> Though, you know, whatever, if you don't like the video, put the thumbs down on there. Um, YouTube statistics don't care if you like or dislike it, but I, I get a little credit for every time I get a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So, you know, building subscribers all along the way. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you all are staying safe and I hope you have a wonderful day.